Wait, am I really here? Can you hear me? Is my mic on? I don't know why, but I'm so, well, I know why I'm excited because Stella's here, Eric's here. This is so, I don't know if I'm even going to remember how to do this. Good Monday morning to you. So happy to be back in the studio. It's nice and dusty, just like I left it. Uh, March 13th was the last day I was here. So there's actually some stuff happening traffic wise. Great to see what people are doing to, you know, help communities. I know. Well, how am I supposed to compete though with a slab of meat though? I feel like that's, that's all you need. That's very uplifting. No, this is a great story. So two Jewish teenagers are creating face masks from traditional Jewish skull caps to protect the homeless community from the coronavirus. Watch. So here's the idea we came up with. So you take a kippa, preferably these larger made of like fabric and cloth kind of ones because they're a bit easier to use. And you also need an elastic band, which is six and a half inches. So what you do is you take the seam of the keeper here and you go one down on each side so you have, you know, a good space and then you attach it on here on, on the seam and then you go about two inches down and that creates kind of like, you know, a handle for it and then this is what the final product will look like and you put it on. And so, I mean, we're trying to make these for ourselves but mainly for the people. Matthew and Jeremy Jason launched kippahs to the rescue from their Houston, Texas home. They sewed more than 300 face masks from the traditional Jewish skull cap. The teens said they were just thinking about how they can help the community, and that's when they noticed the kippah fits the shape of the face. And they had all these extras, you know, so they, they really put it to use, and they're donating it to homeless people and people in need. Okay, so grocery shopping these days is one of the few outings we can actually count on, and it's become somewhat of a fashion show for some. I want you to meet Karen Henricks Lukes from Cincinnati. <laughs> She's a costume crafting aficionado and this is how she does her grocery shopping. So Karen decided to kick things up a notch, if you will. She says, hey, in apocalyptic movies, everyone has a crazy getup. So I thought this is the time to decide what we're wearing. She says, you know, on a serious note, she's dramatized her fears of the pandemic and put them on parade using these costumes. So she made that enormous hoop skirt to make sure everyone keeps their distance, that dramatically large and sharp beak like mask that's to prevent breathing in the virus and while she's using the crafting to cope she's also making the rest of us smile and have you been quarantined so long you just plum forgot how to work out kind of like this guy no oh. that's, <laughs> that's not a beer yeah those home workouts aren't cutting it for most of us hopefully we remember how to get to the gym once they're back open I'm not kidding I driving into work had to put it into my GPS just in case because I wasn't sure I would remember how to get here so <laughs> I'm with you Jenny I was like what time do I need to leave my house to make it here on time and speaking of the workouts I mean it's hard to get motivated when you're at home yeah, yeah. when the couch is here and like one dumbbells here you're like eh, eh, what do that, I do that guy took the uh, 12 ounce arm curl and actually turned it into a 12 pound <laughs> arm curl good workout well a birthday in quarantine isn't what most kids dream of unless you're this little girl watch this Also, most people I feel like don't want police at their birthday. Right. You know, I'm just saying. Uh, meet Natalie Wolf, who recently turned five years old. Her mom, Andrea, says her little girl dreams of being a first responder. So for her, this was a, the best birthday ever. So her mom writes on Facebook. Natalie got to meet a hero on her birthday. She got to hang out with an officer who is a girl like me. She actually called her a shiro. So thank you so much for making today special and being an inspiration. Hey parents, homeschooling, got y'all ripping your hair out. Why not sit your kids in front of the TikTok app? That'll teach them. For what value of n is the absolute value of n minus one plus one equal to zero? So the first thing I will do is write this down. Okay, so after I wrote this out into the equation, then we do minus one on both sides to just get n minus one equals negative one. Okay guys, so now let's pause here. So notice how we have the absolute value of n minus one equals negative one. But notice how there actually cannot be no value of n to satisfy this equation because no absolute value will give you a negative uh, number. Well, my brain just exploded. <laughs> I don't know what just happened. That's high schooler Alexis Lovarez from New York. He's taking his incredible math and science skills and sharing them on TikTok. He says, I want scholars to feel assurance and to build confidence. So if they don't truly understand a topic, they can watch my videos. And watch they do. Alexis is getting millions of views on his level. 
lessons and already has more than 661,000 followers or students, I guess you'd say. I'm guessing half of those are parents looking for help. And no matter how bad things seem to get, it's always important to try and finish each day on a happy note, kind of like this. Oh, and it's rising in the back of your mind. Never forget it unless you fail it. Now you're here and you don't know why. Under the skin knees. Meet the Quarantone, so that's a married couple from Dallas, Texas, who are quarantining, quarantining with their four young kids and remaining sane by singing songs. Notice the children are nowhere in the room. Chris and Christine Munzel said they met in high school choir, but they haven't actually sung together since then. But when the coronavirus hit and they found themselves stuck at home learning new songs and sharing them with others, well, it seemed like the perfect pick me up. Every day they record themselves covering a classic song and then posting them online. They say it's just kind of a way to change up each day and give it a little more meaning. And this could be the food trend we've all been waiting for, pancake cereal. Watch this and I dare you not to salivate. So I decided to hop on the trend and make pancake cereal. I put butter on the pan and made little dots using my pancake batter. I waited until they were golden brown to flip them. Next, I put them in a bowl and poured syrup all over them. So I decided to hop on the trend. And Doesn't that look so good? So good. So many people are doing this. It's just one of the things everyone's trying in their kitchen. People are doing like the whipped strawberry milk trend, uh -huh. the whipped coffee trend, the white claw, white claw slushy trend. Oh. This is super cute though. I've seen people do this and like feed their little hamsters mini <laughs> oh. pancakes. You know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. Little super quarter cute. sized pancakes. That, that's a fun thing to try with that's the kids. Though, I know. Right? Uh, did, did she add milk to that no, or just syrup? I, think, that's I was just waiting syrup. for the milk too. Yeah. It's just the maple and it's syrup. The syrup oh. in it. And then you just that eat it like amazing. a bowl of cereal. Wow. That's amazing. Okay, the things people are coming up with these days. Thanks, Jenny.